ਸਹਿਜ ਤੇ ਨੇਚਰਲ ਇਨ ਮੀ ਅਫਰਮਸ ਨੇਚਰਲ ਇਨ ਯੂ ਵੀ ਟੂ ਅ ਲਿਟਲ ਬਿਟ ਆਫ ਜਰਨੀ ਸਟਾਰਟਡ ਵਿਦ ਸੋਸ਼ਲ ਇੰਟੈਲੀਜੈਂਸ ਔਰ ਹੈਲਦੀ ਈਗੋ ਔਰ ਹੈਲਦੀ ਆਈਡੈਂਟੀਟੀ to find our place in the world not to stay there but to prepare the ground for future adventure of consciousness as supreme said when that was achieved then we moved slowly inside us our personality our personal intelligence a door was opened and we heard our inner voice that vibration which is original to us because in healthy identity what we hear inside us doesn't belong to us it is all borrowed from our background there is a whole crowd which we take wherever we go and it doesn't leave us alone but once we enter into our personality finally we could hear it we could see it we could feel it but now today in this exploration we are at the boundary we are at a very critical point which will decide our whole life because on one side our own voice our own light our own fire our original vibration is calling us to reclaim ourselves fully on other side is the security safety promises of the whole culture whole society and that is where truly heroes journey begins this concept is very old but it was reemphasized by great joseph campbell hero's journey is not about conquering nations subjugating people climbing the mountains crossing the seas it is not about accumulating knowledge becoming a great political leader or a businessman or even doing great social work because in all those situations what is not conquered is inside of us those are merely horizontal expansion more and more of the same here we are going to take a vertical leap but in order to take that leap call for our hero inside us our own greatness we have to enter into our own darkness maslow said that we have fear of our own greatness he called it jonah's complex 
we can do so much in external but achieve so much out there and it is not so difficult but here we have to enter into ourselves to face our fear our sufferings our despair loneliness anger trauma emotional scars since our childhood because normally what we do we just put a lid of ego that is why ancient one always said you have to go beyond ego but ego is the only mechanism which we have because that ego and identity is about our knowledge our status our prestige our safety whatever we earn our relationship the whole world which is called samsara and at this point which is existential crisis because on one side is this whole world which we created and on other side our little light little vibration is still far away calling us and it depends on us whether we take that call or not if we don't take it we become mundane we remain mediocre which is fine too there is no problem with it but here here we are looking for more that is why it is also called dark night of soul so whatever we did before in the name of spirituality was actually mechanical technical we did meditation we did yoga we did pranayam all techniques spirituality is not about technique technique is a very good beginning but what techniques do the kama stone and when the lake of the mind is calm then we can see in depth the treasures that pearl that jewel of our own being but we have to dive into this deep water and that is the question here at this point today and most people what they do they never die because that old security old safety is so important and the beauty is in this process we need not to leave any part of the physical world our job our home this whole drama this whole thing is actually in our mind a drama of human life is not played in external world it is played in our brain in our emotions in our thinking it is entirely a psychological revolution in the beginning and then spiritual rebellion and revolution relentless but most people decide not to they compromise they are fearful because it needs courage it needs daring act to break all those shackles the bondage of the past and throw ourselves into this dark net not knowing what will happen to us so what most people do many people do in a stead of insight they are satisfied with information in a stead of pearls of wisdom they feed on stale 
verbs. Instead of challenge, they prefer consolation. Instead of spiritual leap, they demand more and more safety and security. This is called substitute satisfaction. Instead of revolution, it is now retreat, endless retreat. For what? And once we plunge ourselves because we follow our voice, we go through thick darkness and in the darkness we tear, we are tearing apart all the past. So we will be healed, we will become wholesome. It is an extreme catharsis, a total detoxification, a radical cleaning. But this also contains moments of terror, moments of despair. Because we are left completely bare, naked psychologically. Because we let go all protection. But that is the only way that in us a Rishi is born, a seer is born, because the light, the fire which was taken away from us, in order to live in the world we reclaim that fire and that light. On our bare hand we hold that fire. This is the ultimate victory. This is the ultimate conquering. And we come out of the other end as a wholesome person, a holy person. Holy person doesn't mean a person who performs ritual who facilitate gathering of thousands of people who read scripture. Not a person who is a scholar. This is a person who opened the book of his life completely. And at this point, Truly the spirituality begins. What we think of normally spirituality, I am meditating. I have knowledge of holy books. I am a follower of a guru. I worship deities. Those are very beautiful true. Not to be rejected. That is how we start. But we must understand they are all the part of our mind. They spiritualized our mind. They spiritualized our ego. They are not spiritual. Then what is spiritual? Where I will say truly the spirituality begins. It begins after we cross this darkness, when our hero's journey gained a major milestone. And what is that defining feature of his spirituality? The defining feature of his spirituality is Shakshi Bhav. Krishna talked about it to Arjun. Arjun was spiritualized but not spiritual. 
and ultimately he developed Shakshi Bhav, the witnessing consciousness. Becoming a pure observer in which we don't judge, in which we don't label, in, in which we don't react. This ocean-like consciousness which is pristine, pure, tranquil, serene and in which the whole world is reflected inside world and outside world. That is spirituality. That doesn't mean that this appears only at this point after existential crises. Actually, it appears time to time before also. Because these levels of awareness are not isolated, not compartmentalized. They penetrate each other. But at ego level, at identity level, they are only for few moments. And they are far and there is so much space in between. They appear, they create a magical mo moment and then they disappear and we forget them. That is why in a lot of tradition they say, it is self-remembering. It is all. It is already there. It was already there. Why that forgetfulness is there? Because of this whole movement of our mind. But now it is cleared, and it shines like a white fire, burning ceaselessly. And in those moments, everything is reflected in its isness, as J. Krishnamurti said, in its endness. It is first time the state of meditation. Whatever we did, before that was a meditation technique, technique which is put together by the mind. Close your eyes, relax your shoulder, focus on your breath, feel your body and sensation. Lot of people who practice mindfulness, they really think they are meditating. They are living in here and now in this moment. That is just not possible because that is merely a technique. And technique is very important because technique calms down the body and mind. So we could see what is beneath in depth. And that is what happens. I call it natural self. First time we are aligned with this witnessing consciousness, with the, with the natural rhythms of our body and mind. We are in flow. Finally, we entered into the river of our life. Before that, we were not into our life. We were sitting at beach and we were scared that what will happen if I enter into this river? Because we don't know, there may be a whirlpool, there may be strong current, it will drown us. But now we entered. Now we are going to experience flow. That doesn't mean our sorrow will disappear, our fear will disappear, our jealousy will disappear. But now the strength of those emotional and cognitive turmoil is weak. They are there, but they are not going to make much mark on our mind. They won't leave any impression. 
they won't create any problem. They will be there. But this river of our being, this river of witnessing consciousness will wash them away. That is why at this point we are healed. That trauma, that scar, that despair, that loneliness, that fear which we were carrying since we became aware around the age of two to four, now going to be cleaned, will be healed, will be wholesome, we will be holy. That is the meaning of holy, becoming wholesome. Not any more, more fragmented. We are going to work as an individual. The true definition of individual is indivisible, who is not divided, who is not conflicted. That is where we become spiritual. Before that, we are spiritualized. Now from Mumukshu, Mumukshu is an explorer and hero on this journey. But after this journey, Mumukshu becomes Samarpit. So we started our journey from Utsuk, enthusiast. We became Jikyasu, curious. We became Mumukshu, explorer. And now, with this integrative intelligence, we are Samarpit. We are totally into there is no looking back. And with witnessing consciousness, our brain finally is free of old patterns. And it is functioning as one unit, the lowest part of the brain, the middle part of the brain, upper part of the brain, which we call reptilian brain, mammalian brain, and neocortex or human brain are one unit. And with that comes the second defining feature of spirituality, a sense of rapture, bliss, anand, satchit anand. Anand is bliss. What is the difference between happiness, joy and bliss? Happiness comes from the mind, from thinking, if I receive one million rupees, one million dollar, what I get? Happiness. When I look at my back palace, I look at my 20 room, grand house, that bring me happiness. Short living. Experienced in my mind, a little bit effect, effect on the emotions and body because they are not separated. Then comes joy. Joy is primary emotional. It is about relationship, friends, love. That gives joy. Emotional. It has more power because it comes from the heart, not from the mind. And finally, bliss of integrative intelligence and natural self at this point is even in the body because each cell of the body is dancing and celebrating. So it is body, it is emotions, it is cognitive mind, thinking mind, all are in rapture with the bliss. So that is the quality of bliss. It is felt in body. So witnessing consciousness, Shakshi Bhav, experience of bliss, and we are reborn. First birth was from mother's womb into this world. Second birth is from the womb of darkness which I hid. I was incubating. And now after 
turmoil, after turbulence, after despair, after terror of the delivery. As we know, when a baby is delivered, the whole uterus is closing on the baby. And then going through the birth canal, which is so narrow, it must be a very suffocating experience. And the great psychiatrist Tenilov Grof wrote about this trauma, perinatal trauma. But after this, we are born from our own dark womb. We are the parents, we are the child. Finally, psychological umbilical cord from our real parents is cut. We become independent. We are delivered into the world of light, in the universe of celebration. That little vibration which was a shrill voice is now a full song. Walt Whitman wrote so beautifully in Leaves of Grass, I celebrate myself, I sing to myself. Yes, we are not worried about others whether they are listening to us or not. We are singing to ourselves because there is a completeness, there is a wholeness. We are healed, we are celebrating, we are in bliss. And we recreated ourselves because it's a vertical leap. We are recreated in our own image not in the image of my family, my culture. No more imitation, no more copying. We are original. And that is why in this originality, in this uniqueness, our original story now appears to us. The whole karmic flow in its totality a story which is full. Because before that, whatever my story was, it was fragmented, because it was disturbed. It was broken down by so many stories which were trying to dominate my life. Now all that is no more. So my original life story, which I was carrying such long time since my birth and people who believe in reincarnation rebirth for last hundreds and thousands of lives since the origin of this universe emergence of the universe and that story is my destiny yes we are all born with our destiny Destiny is not about rigid. It is not about predetermination. A lot of people understand it wrong. Destiny simply means who I am, a Triveni, a meeting point of three rivers of my genes in my parents, my epigenetic structure, from my culture, my environment, and from my past life. I'm a combination of that. And in that combination, there is a factor of unknown. Because that is the very nature of who we are. And that unknown contains infinite possibility. So please don't think destiny is etched in stones. It is like a river. But now I entered into the river, I know this river. But this river can be small, this river can be wide, this river can be flooded, and this river will be joined with other stories of my life. 
which were not completed and those streams join and make this river more and more wide because what is the destination of the river is ocean so i discover my destiny now no more wanderings no more wanderings because that is the nature of this sansara world we do so many things we have so many so much skill we follow so many we accumulate so much knowledge but in spite of that we don't know we are not clear what i'm supposed to do in this life what is the meaning of life who am i where i am going from where i came but in these moments of integrative intelligence we are crystal clear it is freedom from fear guilt and conflict it is living with passion we are reborn we are recreated and if you really want to see this in which one go to the akshardham temple in delhi in that exhibit with the first room and what you will see a huge piece of marble and in that marble a sculptor is sculpting himself because first type of creativity is when we make a sculpture outside paint or produce music but in that piece of marble you can see a sculptor is emerging and sculpting himself that is what happens uncut marble stone that is who we are but once we come to this point finding our destiny we finally sculpt ourselves according to our destiny or blueprint with which we were born but the beauty of this sculpture is it is perfect not the perfect of the mind perfection of the mind is like a garden absolutely symmetrical it is a symmetry of a jungle wholesomeness so in this hero's journey after those obstacles and test of darkness we arrived into the light but it is another milestone still we didn't arrive just another leap another achievement but so much more to come we became fully functional individual but still universe is waiting for us cosmos is inviting us and then once in a while there is something even beyond cosmos but we are going to explore tomorrow and day after tomorrow. say just stay and if you have any questions uh, please write in this facebook comment and then i will respond to them hope to see you tomorrow 8:30 canadian eastern time or 6 in the evening indian